Father, we thank you. You are an awesome God. You are an awesome Lord. There is nobody like you. I thank you, Lord God, because the testimony that you've given me is that you're still a keeper. You're still the one that makes the way out of the way. So we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, let the words of my heart, the meditation of my heart, be accepted with thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. But Father, the ear that is dull of hearing, I ask that you open it. The heart that is heavy, I ask that you lift it. And the mind that is scattered, I ask that you bring it to unity of faith. Believing in your only son, Jesus. And I'll be so careful, and we will be so careful, to give you praise, to give you glory. In Jesus' name we say, amen.
going the distance. Amen. We're still going to go the distance. And today we're going to talk about obedience. And, and I ended last Sunday with talking about they missed what he said. Y'all remember I said that before, I, before we, when I closed out. I, I said they missed what he said. Amen. He, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't. And, and here's the thing. He didn't get caught up in the fact that the wind stopped. He didn't get caught up in the fact that the water the water ceased and had peace. He was more concerned about their faith. He was more concerned about their faith. But guess what? They missed it like we do all the time. Oftentimes, when you hear this message and it's preaching, I've preached it before, we, we highlight what manner of man is this? That the seed water, everything obeys him. We got caught up, but we didn't realize Jesus was teaching us responsibility. He was, <laughs> he was teaching us responsibility. He was teaching us responsibility. He was teaching them that whatever I tell you, you can trust it to happen. And matter of fact, I didn't just tell you to go, I'm going with you. So if I'm going with you, then what are you worried about? If God be for us, Paul says this in Romans 8, if God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, and so in this, in this going the distance, we in order to go the distance, the only way you're going to go is to be obedient. You cannot go in disobedience. You, 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 remember in Ephesians, it talks about the enemy is the, the devil is the prince and the power of the air. And guess what it says that it, it works through how he works is through the sons of disobedience. I don't want the devil working in me. I don't want I don't want him doing having his way with me. I don't know about you, but do I have anybody that's on board with that today? Anybody on board with that today? I don't I don't want the enemy having having free, free reign in my life. I don't want him coming and going like, like he lived here. Uh, yeah, yeah, did, did that make sense? I don't want the enemy coming and going like he lives here. Like he ain't got to get no permission from me to do anything. He just walk up and I'll just do whatever I feel. Because that's how he addresses us. From, to cause us to be in disobedience is he addresses our flesh. Because our flesh is not saved. Say it with me. My flesh is not saved. It's not saved. Romans the seventh chapter. Guess what? Paul gives an illustration. He gives an illustrated uh, text on how the flesh fights against the spirit and it wars against the spirit. He gives us, he tells us, he tells us that no good thing dwelleth in my flesh. He tells us this, he says, now when I would do good, when I would do good, when I have made up my mind to do good, he says evil. Now listen to what he says, it's always can you find that picture today? Because somebody might think I'm just misquoting scripture. I don't want nobody to think I'm misquoting scripture. But evil is always, what is it? When I would do good, evil is always with me. That's not the, well, the good that I do. But the, yeah. But guess what? It is really hard. It's really hard to do good when you have, don't make the choice to do good. Okay, this side. Let me see if y'all can. <laughs> Evil is present with me. Yeah. It's present with me. I knew she'd find it. Evil is present with me. It's, it's not going anywhere. I know you saved and sanctified, filled with the mighty power of God, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, got Jesus on your side, and you running for your life, and you speak in tongues of the Spirit of God, give utterance, and you that with fire, and you are all awesome person. 
You're an awesome person. Because for the last 20 to 30 years, we preach from the awesomeness of who we are. But never accomplishing the awesomeness. We talk it, but we're not accomplishing it. That goes to be because we misquote the scriptures that are misquoted in the saying that death and life are in the power of the tongue. But guess what? When you don't understand the reason behind the proverb, you quote the proverb and don't realize that obedience lies in there. Because I don't quote what I want. I quote what he wants. So I'm asking for a car. I'm speaking a car in my life. I'm speaking, I'm speaking the jewelry in my life. I'm jewelry. I'm speaking, I'm speaking couches in my life. I'm speaking uh, uh, Fortune 500 company in my life. I'm speaking millionaire. Being a millionaire in my life. That's good. But if you're not obedient to the law of business. If you're not obedient, if we're not obedient to the law of business, I don't care how much you speak it. It ain't happening, Jack. God is not our sugar daddy. He's not our sugar daddy. We ain't doing so much for him that he can't help but do some good for me. Praise oh. sir. Let me take a drink right now. We so good to him that he can't help but do something good. Man, please. We, we came into this world, according to the Psalm of David, we came into this world owing him. And we never do catch up. By the way, just so you know, we don't catch up. For those who think that you can make God do something. Mm, I said it. I ain't scared. Yeah. But listen to what it says. Let's go to, let me, let's go to something. Uh, because our focus is described as an undistracted vision. A laser view of a goal, not deviating from the task at hand. Everybody repeat after me. Life, Life is, a is a journey. It is not a sprint. Not a sprint. Okay. You yes. will not get there till you get there. Amen. And you don't know when you won't get there because he didn't he hides that part. Amen. But he tells you you will get there. Yes. How you gonna get there? He hides that part. But what he tells you is, I'm getting on board with you. Let's go someplace. You know, thank you, Holy Ghost. The, the, the Spirit of the Lord just told me to ask y'all a question. How, how long have you not realized that Jesus was with you on your journey? How, how, how long have you not realized that he's with you? Because to realize that he's not with you makes you act like the disciples. Master, care us not that we perish. You forget what he said. He said, I'm going to let us go to the other side. Not, not just you. And he never told us. He told the disciples, Lo, I am with you always. I'm not going anywhere. There's no hell too hot. There's no darkness too dark. That God will not be right there. Now, he never said you're going to feel him all the time. Because faith don't work by feelings. Faith works by believing. And being standing strong in the obedience of believing that though he slay me, yeah. yet I will trust him. Yeah. Though life, I'm serious, though all this stuff, all this stuff may come upon me, I'm comforted by the fact that he's with me. And I don't care that the other little ships, do, do y'all realize the other little ships, they were following them. And I like it because it says the little ships. The little ships. They weren't big ships. They were little ships. So guess what? Guess what? If the water was coming in on their big ship, how much water was getting in on the little ships? 
And it makes a distinction to let us know that the ship they were on might have been a little bit bigger. Because you don't, you don't put little ships in there unless your ship looks a little bit, you know, I got a yacht. You got a pontoon. And, and even in that, there should be something to be said that he takes us inside. Amen. We don't have to look like everybody else. Amen. The little ships are representative of the world. Uh -huh. Trying to see our light. Following our light. They're, they're trying to follow our light. Why do you think everybody is so concerned about what the church does? Yeah. Right. Free, sir. The world is so concerned about what the church does. And the reason why they're concerned about what we do is because the enemy knows that if he can stop the church, the little ships, the world has no hope. We are the light of the world. And if we don't have any light, what happens? Everybody is in darkness. Everybody, this whole world, the world, whether they like it or not, they need us. <laughs> this world needs us be more than we don't need them as much as they need us. Because we have a direction that we're in. We, have, we know where the obedience has to lie. And so they, 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 if we're not careful, we will ruin the lives of those who are following from a distance. Yeah. It's no secret that people say, I'm tired of church. They don't act no different than we do. They don't do nothing different than we do. Not the true church. The true church still trusts God. The true church does not get caught up in this world. Because the benefit for the little ships was the benefit that they had Jesus on board. Because when he stopped the wind, he didn't just stop it for their boat. He stopped the wind for everybody. Stopped it for everybody. He didn't just stop the water. The water until the water peace be still around their boat. Mm -hmm. The benefit. Can anybody get a benefit off your life? Uh -huh. Can anybody? That's a question. Can people get a benefit? Can they look at you and see your obedience to God? And mark it and say, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know I'm just trying to find out. Life is a journey towards the end. Go to uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11 because this is a scripture that we quote so, so loosely. So ever loosely. We quote this so loosely. And you say, well, Pastor, I need some hope. Well, be obedient and you'll get hope. I promise you, he is not slack concerning his promises. And we'll go to Hebrews 10 chapter in a little bit. After this, we'll go to Hebrews after that. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. So I know the thoughts that I think. I'm going to say it one more time. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. There was no inclusivity in there. He didn't include us in that. He said, I know the thoughts I think. Your thoughts can't even reach. And Isaiah, he tells them, he tells them, he says, my thoughts are so far above your thoughts. As the earth is from heaven, are my thoughts above yours. Somebody said, I have to get God's thoughts. I got to get his thoughts. Because if I know what he thinks, 
If I know what he's doing, and he wrote it down. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. He wrote it down. He didn't leave us, you know, just frailing. He, he wrote it down. Yeah. Matter of fact, he sent his living word. It's written down. It says, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of what? Peace. And not of what? To give you and what? Listen to what it says. Thoughts of peace. Where there is chaos, where there is devilment, where there is um, disturbance. God is not in it. He allows it to happen, but he's not in it. He allowed the wind to come up, but he controls it. He don't have to get in it. He can control it just with one word. With just one word. Thoughts of peace. Now, one of the things about peace, most people get this misunderstanding about peace. Peace in, in, the, uh, in, in one of the dictionaries that I read, peace is the undisturbed state of mind. Think about that. Peace, the undisturbed state of mind. Meaning that nothing can get in that causes you to become frail. Nothing can get in that causes you to lose hope. Nothing can get in when you have the peace of God. Nothing can get in that will distract you from your peace. But if you open the door, I promise you the distractions will come in and have a seat. I promise you the headache, the problem, it will have a seat. Because oftentimes the answer is there, but we still keep filling with the problem. She wasn't no good for you no way. But you keep handling with the problem. He wasn't no good for you no way. But you keep handling with the problem. That wasn't no good for you, no way. But you keep talking with the problem. Thinking that the problem, somehow or another, that the problem is going to change. The problem is the problem is the problem is the problem is the problem. The answer is the answer is the answer is the answer. Do you not know the difference? The problem is sin. The answer is holiness. And we don't like that word because we think holy means that you got to look a certain way, you got to dress a certain way, you got to wear long dresses, you got to tighten up. Because that's what we viewed holiness as. Holiness is, I'm going to be holy. 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 No. Holy. If it only addresses your outside and it never affects your inside, then your ins outside can be dressed holy, but your inside is sinful as the day is long. Come on, sir. Your thoughts can be just as crazy as the person who got a skirt up to here and who got a shirt got his shirt off. You can be just as crazy. You'll do everything they do because why? You thought holiness was a look. Holiness is an attitude. It's an attitude of obedience because in order to be holy, he told Israel, he says, be ye holy because what? I am holy. Meaning that I am separated from any other God. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm separated from any other person. Do you not realize that God never had Israel to draw, to do an image of him? You know why? Because no image of God could be, could no image we could create could contain who he is. He never wanted an image of himself. Amen. Never. Amen. Matter of fact, that's why he says you'll have no graven images. None. Don't build no, no type of image. Yeah. That's right. 
Because if you try to make it me, it's just too small. It's minuscule. It's, it's that big compared to who I am. And so he does that. He says, to give you an expected. Everybody say, I have expectations that I will make it. I, I really want you to say it one more time. I have expectations. I will make it. I have expectations, said again, that I will make it. Now listen, no matter what you're going through, no matter where you are right now, say it again. I have expectations that I will make it. Because the enemy will make you think your disobedience has blocked you from making the goal. If you read that story in Mark, the fourth chapter, you find out they made it to the other side, just like he said, even when they couldn't muster up enough faith to get it done. Oh, my goodness. Paul puts it this way in Timothy. He says, when we are faithless, he remains. I'm going to go ahead and shout right now. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When we are faithless, yeah. he remains faithful. Yeah. Do you know what faithful is? The carrying out of faith. He carries out what he has said about Kevin and it's going to come to fruition. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Go to the next verse because we kind of leave that verse out. Verse 12, yeah. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me, and find me when ye shall search me, search for me. Guess what? He want, tells you, David, he wants all. He wants all. When you search for me with all your heart, when you search for me, I know, I know, I know there's a pool for the world. There's a pool to, because we grew up with the wrong understanding. We, we did, a lot of us grew up with the wrong understanding. And, and we grew up thinking that we had to make our way. And God wants us to do his will, not our will. His will makes a difference. Not just for me, it makes a difference for you. It makes a difference. Do you not know that the light that God has put in people have changed, have helped you in the long run? Amen. My grandmother's light and her witness has helped me, even now helping me, seeing how on her bed of affliction she still didn't lose hope. Had a stroke. Couldn't use but one arm, but she used that one arm like, like oh, she got good with it. Ask my brother Timmy. She took that cane and convinced the women. And somebody said, well, Pastor, you'll never tell your story because I'll try to stay out of that area. With my daddy, with every, I'll try to stay away from women. They were just a little bit harsh, if you ask me. It's just a little bit. So I try to stay away from him. And so we have to be mindful that he's not, and it's just like a parent. They whip us, but they still see us through. They don't drop us. Now, now there are some parents that do, but 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 if you had good parents, go ahead and praise God right now. Just fill the room with some praise. Come on. Open your mouth and tell him. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Come tell him thank you. Oh my God, thank you. Jesus didn't leave us without a witness. Go to John 6 and 38. Look what it says in 38. It says, For I came down from heaven 
not to do mine own will, but the will of him that what sent me. Jesus in real time showed his disciples how to stay connected with obedience. He in real time, and this is the Father's will, which has which hath sent me that all of you which have uh, all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. There's provision in there. There's provision of protection. If you're doing the will, he was doing the will of God, and guess what it provided? Protection for the disciples. It provided protection. Most of us don't realize that there are some things that if we live this life right, if we live this life right, it will, <laughs> it will, it, it, it will cause others, it will cause others to want to be a part. It's sad for somebody to come up and, and say, you know, I didn't know you was a Christian. I didn't know you was a believer. It happened to your pastor. Yeah, it happened to your pastor. Back in the day, I was playing my basketball on the yard at Ball State, playing my basketball. And uh, one of the brothers I talked to the other night, he said, man, now you never cursed. Never cursed. I never cursed. But I could put some words on you. It make you feel a little bit small. Didn't have to curse. And I was playing. Ella Teddy, I was playing. And, and you know, we, we went out. We, me and my brothers and my partners, we, we played to win. And why am I telling you this story? Because in everything, we have to give thanks. I played to the point where I didn't take Lucy easy. And if you said something to me out of the way, I wasn't fearful because that's what the brother said, man, you and your brother, y'all weren't scared of nobody. Well, we weren't scared. We playing basketball. It wasn't about fighting. It was about we're here to win. I didn't care. If you put a woman on me, ladies, no offense. I told them, don't do it. My brothers are with I told them, don't do it. Because some of the ladies would come up there, the basketball players would come up and play. I said, don't do it. After I scored the first eight buckets on them, then everybody's mad at me. Nikki, you tell you, they mad at me. I said, well, I told you don't put her on me. I, they said, well, she's a girl. I said, well, say she needs to go play with a girl. <laughs> don't go, don't play with me. But those, the men, and, and that's a whole other thing, and I don't want to get off into that. But men play games. They were trying to be, have some chivalry. Because they thought they can get Come on, sir. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. Come home. on, sir. I wasn't looking for all of that. I came to play ball to win. And so, not long after that, they did an article in the Monthly Times on me uh, as a minister of music. Uh, and I showed up, and they was like, huh, I didn't know you was a Christian. <laughs> Now, I could have tried to stand my ground. Y'all know how we will. We stand our ground. I could come up with something to say to them. But it hit me, it cut me to the quick. Because what kind of light am I displaying? What kind of light am I displaying? And you know, you y'all know, know it changed me. I began to be more obedient to the word of the Lord. Because the word of the Lord even tells me to love my enemies. Amen. That, right there. that 
Yeah, that right there. Love my enemies. It's always easy to love somebody that love you. That's easy. That ain't no big deal. Shine you what you want, man. What you? We can do that. But then when we know somebody don't care for us, we develop that I don't care for them. Just and the disciples un, unknowingly did not care about the little ships. Un, they didn't. They were just following Jesus. Do you not know what you do affects other people? I'm going to say that again because people think that we live in a vacuum. Because I'm saved, sanctified, filled with my power. God, Holy Ghost, fear, fire, my time. Got Jesus on my side, I'm running for my life. And then I was speaking of the spirits of God here to others. All of this stuff. I even pray my heavenly life. All of that stuff. But never realize that your life affects other people. It's, no re it's, not, it's, it's not hard to fathom because your parents' life affected you. Amen. Because some of you act just like them. Amen. That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. No. <laughs> my daddy told me I act like my mama, but he, my, my mama said I got ways like my daddy. <laughs> So we have to understand that if we're not going to be a light, what are we? Go to Acts 1. I'm about to. And then we're going to go with Hebrews 10. Acts, Acts 1. Let's go, let's drop down to verse number four. Let's go to Acts 1 and 4. It says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, Ye have heard of me. He tells them, he gives them a command to wait. One of the hardest things with focus that breaks our focus is patience. It's waiting. 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 And because I'm waiting so long, my focus gets distracted because why? I want something now. It's not, it's not by accident that technology has taken us to the now. Because rather than learn phone numbers anymore, I used to know everybody's phone number that I was connected with. And I was connected with a lot of people. Knew it by heart. Don't ask me now. You'll never get it. You'll never get it. Because this right here, <laughs> I ain't got to put that in there. I ain't got to. Because it takes time to learn and remember a number. It takes time. It takes, and you have to, you have to be intentional to do it. Guess what? Obedience, you have to be intentional to do it. It has to be something you want to do. Because if you're not willing to obey, then you're not going to obey. Because obedience is for the willing. I see so I, so Aisha, she's a, been a teacher and, 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 and in school, they have rules. And the children, if they don't if they're not willing, she got a long day. Uh, Sister Denise is 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 uh, manager. Yeah, urgent care. Yeah, I know urgent care. She gives me with that every time. But if she gives out a directive and it's not followed, what happens? 
It causes problems. It causes problems. It does. It causes problems. And if you're not careful, when we're not willing to be obedient to God, we can't get the promise that's connected to the obedience. It's not connected to the disobedience. It's connected to the obedience. It's not, I'm going to say it again, it's connected to the obedience. It's not connected. Yeah. You, you have to understand, we have to understand that. He says, but wait for the promise, which said he, ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord. Now, you know, it's funny because they seem to miss it like we do. He's saying one thing, and they're thinking something else. That's, that's what we do. God is saying one thing, but we're thinking something, something different. Because we're thinking like they were thinking, man, it's time to take over. It's time to take over. We're trying to get our spot. I'm trying to get my spot with this. Look what he says. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? You will put us back in charge, ain't you? That's what you died for. You died so, so you put us back in power. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. He said the Father, he didn't say I did it. He said the Father had put in his own power. Matter of fact, Jesus said, I don't know, but he does. I don't know, and I'm the son, and I don't know how many people can, can pinpoint the return of Christ uh, down to a month or a day. And Jesus himself didn't know. And he's the one coming back. He's the one coming back. Oh my God. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be what? Witnesses. Unto me both in Jerusalem. And in Judea. And in Samaria. And into the uttermost parts of the earth. Stop right there. But ye shall receive power. Could you imagine if they didn't go and wait? What would we be doing now? If they hadn't gone and been obedient. Go to Hebrews 10. And I'm going to close right here. Go to Hebrews 10. Um, 10 and uh, 34 I think no 35 and you have to say amen. amen says cast not away therefore your confidence which have great recompense of reward so do not throw away the confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Don't throw away your confidence. One of the things that is that that that, that snares us in our focus is our confidence that God will do what He said He would do. That He will still be there. That He that if I'm obedient, that the promise is going to happen. But if but now we, we can believe in the disobedience that the promise ain't gonna happen, but we still don't believe that the promise is gonna happen when we're obedient. But the promise is coming. It's coming. It may not come when you want it, but it will be right on time. That's the song that, that, that somebody penned because why? They were waiting. And they probably felt like I want to stop waiting. Because it don't come, I need it, I thought I needed it today. But it came tomorrow, but guess what? Whenever the promise is fulfilled, I don't know about you, but I shout. I don't know about you, I don't even think how long it took. I'm just thankful that it came. I'm not upset about it, I'm not mad about it, I'm just saying, Lord, thank you, hallelujah. It, I thought it should have came money, but it didn't even matter. Because when you show up, Lord, everything changes. 
my confidence starts to soar. My confidence starts to soar. And he says, for ye have need of what? Ye have need of patience. Need of patience. Need of patience. Patience. The Bible refers to patience in a feminine form. It says, let patience have her perfect work. Her perfect work. But ye have need of patience that after ye have done the what? I don't see my name in there. Have you done the will of Pastor Kevin? Have you done the will of the Church of the Living God? If you have done the will of who? God. Ye might receive the promise. Go ahead. For yet a little while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by what? By faith. The just shall live by faith. The just, the righteous ones, the ones that, that, that are doing, being obedient, shall it's, it's all by faith. I cannot put my hands on it, but I know I've got to do it. I don't figure it out all the time, but because it requires Jesus and men to always pray, I'm going to always pray. I don't know what is working out for anybody else, but I still, if I do it, it's still a benefit. If not just to me, it's a benefit to others because he don't tell me just to pray for me. That's right. He doesn't tell me just to pray for me. But when you just you you disregard it, when you disregard things as though it's not important. And many people look at that passage in Mark and they just disregard the little ships. They just disregard it. Don't even think about it. the little ships. Little ships. <laughs> little ships. <laughs> and you don't realize that the light that you shine, the obedience that you have, will have an effect not on just your family, it's going to have an effect on everybody that sees you. And the storm that they're in, because you get out of it, you come out okay. They can come out okay too. 